So, yesterday we talked about the types of technologies that allowed Europeans to conquer Africa and Asia, thus completing their conquest of approximately 84% of Earth. Today we're going to learn at the call, look at the causes and effects of imperialism directly. So, the scramble for Africa. This occurs between 1800 and 1914, which is often known as the era of imperialism. 1914 is when World War I starts, which is why that generally is when we say that ends. So imperialism is one country's domination of the political, economic, and social life of another country. By the late 1800s, several European countries, as well as the United States, controlled most of the rest of the world. Again, approximately 84%. You see how Africa is all divided up. It's all been divided up among Europeans at this point. So there are several reasons for imperialism. Number one is political rival rivalries. The European countries, Spain, for example. Spain had lots of colonies. They were one of the very first ones to colonize. But Germany, newly formed Germany, wants to be just as powerful as, as Spain is. They want to have just as much money and have just as much colonies and territories. So they're going to have to go and they're going to have to get their own colonies. That way they can get raw materials. That way they can build their prestige. So because everybody else is doing it, everybody else has got to do it. That's number one. Number two is the Industrial Revolution. We've talked about the technologies created as a result of the Industrial Revolution. These technologies allow Europeans to be able to do it. But the second question is, but why do they do it? And the big reason is, is they need the raw materials. The entire British cloth-making industry relies on the cotton grown in the southeast United States and picked by slave labor. They need the raw materials from the colonies in order to meet the demand for the manufactured goods that Europeans are creating. And third is racial and cultural superiority. Europeans believed that they were superior to every other group of people on earth. They believed everybody else was less than them. Europeans believed that it was their role, ordained by God, to bring culture, to bring civilization, to bring Christianity to the rest of the world. So three reasons why Europeans imperialize. Rivalries, the Industrial Revolution allowed them to be able to, and explains why they want to, and third, racial and cultural superiority. Let's look a little bit more into political rivalries. So the major players in imperialism, so again, 1800 to 1914, Great Britain, um, which we've talked about extensively, France, Belgium, it's a country between France and Germany, Germany, Italy, Holland, another country between France and Germany, Spain, Portugal, Russia, and the United States. Now, kind of the way it worked is if Great Britain gained territory, then everybody else had to get, had to get territory. Let's look at why. First is the balance of power. Germany's afraid Great Britain's going to get too powerful. Great Britain is allowed to sell opium in China. Well, then Germany needs to be able to do it too. That way they're just making just as much money from opium as Great Britain is. Because if Great Britain's making too much money, then they can take that money and they can spend it on guns and soldiers. And now they have more guns and soldiers. And next thing you know, Great Britain's attacking Germany and taking it over. So the first is the balance of power. We've got to keep everybody equally powerful. Number two... The competition, the competition for prestige. Prestige is just this idea that I'm really cool. So all the other countries want to outdo all the other countries, which again then contributes to the balance of power problem. Third is greed. Europeans wanted to be rich. And because most European countries are capitalist countries, individuals in European countries want to be rich. Hey, I've got this great idea. We can sell uh, opium to China and make lots of money. Okay. So there are people in these countries that are pushing these countries to get lots and lots of money. So political rivalries, causes of imperialism, balance of power, competition for prestige, greed. This map over here on the bottom right is excellent because it shows us exactly which territories were owned by European countries in Africa. As you can see, there's really only two independent parts. This is Ethiopia right here. And then over here on the very far left, this little tiny country. Um, but the rest of it has been conquered, largely by France and Great Britain. Industrialization. 
So industrialization, remember that's that's the ability to use factories and giant machines to produce other manufactured goods. Industrialization creates a huge demand for raw materials. Huge demand. We need metal. We need cotton. We need everything. So they make these colonies. They imperialize in Asia and, and, and Africa because they're trying to meet the demands, these huge demands created by industrial the Industrial Revolution for these raw materials. Second, and here's the flip side, not only do they need the raw materials from those countries to make the manufactured goods, then they need places to sell the manufactured goods. They need markets. So the other thing is if you go conquer India, then you could say, hey, India, you can only buy from us. Now you just created a market in India for all of your cloth you made in Great Britain. So demand for raw materials, the need for markets to sell goods. That explains industrialization. Three is the civilizing mission, the idea that Europeans are better than everybody else. When a European would, would take over a country, they would force that country to adopt European methods of dress, European languages. They often discourage local populations from, pra from practicing their own traditions and customs. We can see this very, very strongly in India, where the highly educated still learn English. Um, and finally, imperial countries see it as their duty to spread Western ideas and traditions. This is best seen in the book uh, White Man's Burden by uh, Rudyard Kipling, which you will probably read in U.S. history, probably one, maybe two as well. And finally, the scramble for Africa. So at first, Europeans are just explorers. We talked about that. Um, we talked about exploration. Um, but eventually, because of all these stories coming out of Africa about how rich it is, Africans decide they want it. And with the invention of quinine, with the invention of repeating firearms, they're able to finally do it. Now, there are several forces driving imperialism. Again, belief in Europe's superiority, the need for markets, the belief that we need to civilize Africa. Why Africa? Well, really, I mean, what's on the slide is good, but really it's because that's all that was left. The Americas had already been conquered. Most, a lot of Asia had already been conquered, though there is some imperialism in Asia at this point. But really, Africa is the last, it's the last frontier. Um, technological superiority is a huge driving factor with the machine gun, especially specifically the Gatling gun. Um, the, the ability of the steamboat, railroad, um, makes it very, very easy to control places far away. Um, and finally, divisions of African groups. So, I mean, I mean, a lot of Africa is divided up in fighting itself when Europeans show up. And when Europeans finally do show up, it's too late to try and come together and kick them out. They've got better technology. They're more advanced technologically. It doesn't take a whole lot for Europeans to take over the place. Africa is divided up in 1884 at the Berlin Conference. Basically, Europeans did not want to fight over who got what in Africa. So all of the European countries come together. They sit down. They say, okay, you get this section. I get that section. You get this section. It lays down rules for the division of Africa. Um, as they lay down lines, because they're, they're saying, like, this little section is France. This little section is Great Britain. This little section is Germany. As they do that, they have no regard for ethnic divisions. They just care about the resources that are there. Um, no African rulers are invited. No Africans are invited. They don't care. They're carving out what they want, and they don't really care about the people that are there. They just care about the stuff. Um, major source of wealth in Africa lies in its rich mineral resources, copper, tin, gold, diamonds. These are, these are, the, these are the major things that, that the European powers are dividing up and claiming for themselves. This map's kind of blurry, but it kind of shows us, again, same map as earlier, who owned what in Africa. And again, these lines were just drawn by European powers, really around the resources that the European powers wanted. The green, controlled by France, looks really big, but realize that the Sahara Desert takes up most of that. And that's the video for today.